All right, today we are working on the template first for the back end. We got the one for the front end cut out and made, but now we need the back. Luckily this piece here is just big enough to do that. All right, so today's goal is to get this template back here cut out, get the holes drilled, get all that done, put a brace here, put a wall here, and uh, pretty much make that box back here for the rods. Then I want to go ahead and get all of this foamed. So we'll get foam on this piece, foam back here, foam, foam. I'll probably foam this before I even attach the box. So get all of this foamed with this foam here, this white, black, and gray camo. This is just the cheap stuff off Amazon, so I said screw it. Let's go ahead and get all of it foamed out with this now since I have it. I could even go ahead and get all of these boxes foamed out as well today. That would be pretty sick. I also need to go to the store and get some tubing for this as well. So don't let me forget that, guys. All right? Remind me in the comments. All right, we're going to need this. All right, there is the piece. Let's see if it fits. The cardboard is always easier to get in than the actual piece because it can bend. All right, so I got that wall put in. It fits perfect, but my idea with this hole right here, I have this random cut piece of metal that I cut from some earlier piece on this boat. I'm not, I'm not sure where. Oh, this may have been the floor. Yeah, okay, that was the floor piece, but this was laying on the ground, and check this out. So it has this little lip right here. That is where this is going to sit. And it's going to enclose that just like that perfectly. I need to make a little trim over here. But the fact that that worked out so perfect for this piece is insane. But I need to add a piece of angle behind here. So I can attach that to that. And it stays. I don't think I have any leftover pieces of one inch. Nope. Let me go grab some more one inch. Look at all them rods. I got the metal stash inside. Don't want no one going in the garage and stealing it. But, oh, let's grab three more pieces of one inch. All right, restocked on metal. One foot, three quarter. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Ah, beautiful. Uh, this piece should sit right on top of that. Oh yeah. This side's pretty uh, flimsy over here. This side's supported, this side isn't. I could add a tiny little piece here to here. We might have a small piece to fit in that corner. We should. Guys, this is why you save all your little cutoff pieces because you will be using them later on in the project for sure. We'll try this one. So if I could just pop that right in there, that will be perfect support. We're gonna do it. All right, this drill bit is done for. I think that's like drill bit number five. Oh, there they are. Yeah, just go buy a crap ton of 3 16 drill bits. You will need them. probably use a new countersink bit too like see how wavy it is I think that bit is done for too now that piece is supported completely I'm not gonna rivet that on just yet because I still need to get this out holy crap I need to get this out <laughs> I forgot about that oh, it was so hard to get in maybe I can go this way with it ah oh, yeah all right, it is now time to trace out the holes and get these cut out on this second piece. I'm just gonna kind of guess on the straightness of this. No, I'm not, I'm not guessing. I'm gonna draw lines so it shows me that it's straight. Draw a line every two inches, I guess. Okay, now that we have the lines, I can drop this down and make sure all the holes are straight. I'm thinking, I may just do three big holes. What do y'all think? I think that might be better. Instead of doing nine holes, we'll do three 
big holes that are somewhat shaped like this. So three big ovals. And that way you could probably even fit more rods in there. I saw Michael Lopez do this on his build and I was like, okay, that's cool. But uh, I was still gonna do the holes, but uh, now that I'm looking at it and thinking about it, I think this will be better. You can probably even fit more rods this way too. Cause one can definitely get inside one hole, but two in one hole, not possible. But if you have a whole slot, you can probably fit four or five in one slot instead of just three. So I'm thinking that's what we're gonna do. So let's get this squared off and centered and where we want it. All right, that's the spot, let's do it. So I'm gonna trace this outer circle, this outer circle, this one. Well, crap, I'm gonna have to freaking cut it out anyways with a circle, so. Might as well trace the whole thing. Find the center hole of these, cut them out, and then I'll use a jigsaw. All right, there's that one. All right, so that is cutting very close. I mean, it's touching it. So I think I'm gonna move the whole thing down half an inch. That is perfect. All right, so I got all the holes drilled out and I have a tip that I just learned. So if you look at this hole, it's very clean. It stayed in the same spot. But if you look right here, the bit here was bouncing all over the place, sliding everywhere, cutting horrible. And I learned that, so aluminum has a really low melting point. So this blade gets super hot. The piece of metal gets super hot to where you can't even touch it. But I learned that with each cut, you're gonna get little bitty pieces of aluminum inside the blade. I even got a big piece in there, but it melts to the blade and it gets stuck to the blade and it makes the cut horrible. It makes the blade bounce all around. So between each cut, I had to go through each blade and break off all of the aluminum so it would cut straight. So just be aware of that. If your blade is not cutting right, it's because you have aluminum melted to the actual blade itself. But we got all the holes cut out. Now I just need to go ahead and trace a line from this hole to that hole. All right, there's the lines. And I'll be using a grinder to cut that. Okay, so I got all the slots cut out and I'm gonna be putting some of this door guard around all these edges. So let's go ahead and start doing that. This door guard stuff is freaking amazing, man. All right, so there's one. Looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and stick on the other ones. Man, check that out. That makes everything just look 10 times better. All right, there it is. Holy crap, that looks sick. Let's just for fun, put this down. There it is, dude. Holy crap, that looks so freaking good. So we got the back end done, we got the front end done, and that is pretty much all of the walls for the rod locker. You can, in fact, see the wall back here and the floor. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to foam all of that before putting all this on. So I'm gonna mark where this wall is. That way I know where to put the foam. Bam. I need to weigh this because this feels pretty heavy, but we'll get it foamed and then we'll weigh it. Get the surface clean and then we'll bust out the foam. All right, so we're busting out the first piece of foam. I already got my marks made. I'm cutting out a four and seven sixteenth strip. All right, so I got some alcohol here. I'm just gonna be cleaning off the metal with this and then attaching the foam. This freaking adhesive on this thing is amazing, by the way. Sticks so freaking good. So I'm glad I'm using this design on the inside because it will give me an idea of how the whole boat is gonna look. I was thinking and 
this camo it might be quite a bit i mean this boat is gonna freaking pop we got the bright red finish on the outside and then we're gonna have this white camo it's gonna be this boat is gonna stand out for sure so uh if it's too much on the inside then uh, i might change the color on the outside but we'll see it all just depends All right, now we need a piece to fit all this wall here. Hey, how are you? good, how are you? Good. Uh, thank you, ma'am. You're welcome, thank you. Sweet, we got mail. I wonder if that's the lids. Oh, we got some boxes from Okuma. Oh baby, we got some uh, fluorocarbon. So we got some line, and then we got, oh, we got some reels too. We got three reels. What? Wasn't expecting that. Hold up. All right, let's see what we got from Okuma. All right, so we got some fluorocarbon here. What size is that? We got 20 pound fluorocarbon, 15 pound fluorocarbon, 20 pound, another 15. So we got two 15 pounds and two 20 pound fluorocarbon. And then we got 12 pound, 12 pound, and 12 pound. And sweet. So we got some fluorocarbon from Soft Steel. Guys, if y'all need line, softsteelusa.com. That is the place to get it. Oh, baby. Finally got some fluorocarbon in. I have fluorocarbon. I have a bunch of 10 pound, but I needed some 15, 20, and 12 pound as well. So we got that. Next up, oh, Helios SX. Is this a baitcaster or are they spinning? That has to be baitcaster, right? Oh, I didn't want to tear that, oops. Oh no, it's spinning, okay. Sweet, dude. Oh, so sexy. Dude. Freaking Okuma, man. They kill it every time. Oh, so stoked. This might be my drop shot. Ned rig. Spinning reel. Freaking clean, man. I saved all these boxes. I don't know why I ripped it. I was too excited, I guess. Oops. There's the first one. Hey, you have a big box over there. Wow. Is there over there? It just got here. It did it? Yeah. I'm sad I was, it. I was too excited for my stuff to deal with your stuff. All right, next up, we got, oh baby. I've been waiting for this reel for the longest time. Okuma Serrano, they finally got them in. And we got two of them? I was not expecting two of them, but I will take two gladly. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Freaking sweet, dude. Let me go grab the rod real quick. All right, so here is my Serrano rod from Okuma. This rod has been sitting on my shelf for the longest time now. Since I've been with Okuma, this is one of the first rods I got and the reels finally came in and I finally get to use this bad boy. So this is going to be my jerk bait and topwater rod. But here is the Serrano reel. Let's go ahead and throw it on for the first time. There she is. Dude, that blue looks freaking crazy, man. Let's take these off. You don't need those. God, look how freaking sick, dude. I'm stoked, I am so freaking stoked. So top water, jerk bait, frog rod. Oh, finally, man. Finally got this bad boy set up. And I have another one as well. Yep, same thing. I don't know why they sent two, but hey, we have a backup. So, we got some new reels, baby. I'm stoked. Thank you, Okuma. Thank you, Soft Steel. So, guys, once again, if you need some awesome fishing gear, softsteelusa.com. 
and okumafishingusa.com is the place to go. Links are in the description. This is a six foot 10 medium action rod. Just get a little test fit here. Bam. Dude, look how freaking, God. That color, that blue color is crazy. But it's so freaking sick. Drug bait, top water, light Texas rig, underspin. All right, let's go put this up and get back to working on the boat. Thank you, Okuma. All right, I got a little distracted there with some stuff, but uh, let's get back to it. All right, I'm happy with that fit. Let's go ahead and put it in. Alright, so there is that put back in. Where's the top piece? We need the top piece. We need the full the full picture here. Alright, there it is. I think I wish I still had that rod out here. I'd shove it in there, but oh well. We're gonna be going through a whole lot of foam. I'm hoping I can cut this piece out here and still have enough. Oh yeah, that should be long enough to do the rest. Sweet. actually came out really clean. These round parts came out cleaner than the straight part. Ah. All right, so I got that all cut out. It looks pretty good. I'm stoked with that, but now I need to make space for the door guard. So I'm gonna measure how thick the door guard is. It is about three eighths thick. Oh, I didn't think about that. It's three eighths long, but it's gonna be hitting this top right here. So I'm gonna go a little bit shorter. All right, so I just pulled the piece back and threw on the door guard just to see how it looks. It's definitely shorter but I think that would be all right. I think it will still look pretty dang clean. Okay, so for this first piece, I had to use a ruler and mark out three eighths the entire way around. I cut it out, but for these next holes, I just used the cutout as a template. I put it down, stuck it to the mat, and traced around it with a knife but I got all of that cut out, so let's go ahead and peel it off. And... There's the other... Well, there it is. What do you guys think? I think it looks pretty decent. I like it. All right, there it is, folks. That looks pretty freaking clean. Holy crap, I'm, I'm stoked with that. I would love to get this riveted on, but can't. This foam is uh, not wanting to come off too easy, so we're just gonna stick it in there. Like I said, it's a pretty tight fit, and we're just gonna hope for the best. Hope it never comes out. And once I put the foam here, that's gonna sandwich this bottom piece into the floor that will not be able to move like I can hit that hard against the foam back here and it doesn't move so once I do the same thing to the front side here it's gonna be the same thing to make it so much more sturdier but I do want to go ahead and make this piece longer so I need to add you know, add about a quarter okay we're gonna use this piece 
This is thicker. This is the four thickness. So that actually works out perfect. Once again, guys, this is why you save all your cutoff pieces because you never know. You may need it later on in the build. This piece is perfect. I wanted a piece that had a factory cut because the factory cut is way, way cleaner than my cuts. So I wanted that factory cut to be on this edge where you're gonna see it. Whew. Guys, it is so freaking hot in this garage. My camera actually just overheated and turned off. But check this out. We got this piece cut and it looks so freaking good. This whole area looks so freaking good. But we're gonna go ahead and get this riveted on. I talked about my countersink probably being messed up too earlier, I think. But uh, I think it's just I need to put more pressure on it and run it slower. And it seems to be running more straight or smooth, I guess I should say. Slow and pressure wins the race, I guess. Dude, I wish I knew that sooner. Slow and a lot of pressure, man. I'm telling you. Those are tips that you never hear in videos. Except for mine. <laughs> Dude. See what I'm saying? Like, that's the difference. I was running it fast and just letting it drill it out. And you can see the edge. It's horrible. Even worse right here. It looks like teeth marks around the bit but if you look at this one it is nice clean a perfect clean cut wish i knew that sooner but now i know all right there we go that piece is in and this back end is done let me vacuum out all these pieces let's go ahead and pull this one out get some foam on it Oh my gosh, you know what? I cannot get that back in once there's foam on it. Crap. I'm gonna have to take off this brace here. Take off this brace, this brace here. Mark where the foam needs to end. Foam it, stick it in a place, and then I can get it back on inside there. Holy crap. I'm glad I thought of that. Let's get this back in, get it marked, and then we'll start taking all these off. I think it's only one. It should only be two rivets. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this mark again. Marked it before, but. All right, so that is where I need to add foam. Where, oh, I'm gonna do a test. I have this piece of foam here. So I'm just gonna stick it on and cut out that hole and see how the PVC pipe fits in this hole before actually doing it. So I'm gonna do two tests. I'm gonna do a test where I cut it out completely which will, be, which, which will be this one. And then I'm gonna do a test where I just notch it. I notch the foam and I'm gonna see if I can stick the PVC pipe in with the foam and that will give it a super tight fit. And just see which one works better and which one I wanna do. That actually looks really good. That is perfect, I like that. The idea with that is to push this in fold it around and see how the PVC pipe fits in there. So with that one, the PVC pipe sits out higher. So I'm thinking I'm gonna do the cutout hole. All right, so this is gonna be the fun part. I have to get foam inside of these lines, but not outside the lines. Because once I put foam in there, I'm not gonna be able to see these lines. So I gotta mark it on the outside and that is gonna be my cut lines. Or I could place this down on top of this and trace it out that way.
right, we got the piece foamed. Let's go ahead and take out this brace here. Guys, another tip I have for you. Whenever you drill out rivets, just like I did, it leaves that ring on there. Take that ring off. If you get like three or four rings on there, they are impossible to get off. So do it as you get them on. I had to throw away a whole bit just because I had so many of those on, I couldn't use it anymore. So be aware of that. That's all back to normal. And we got it foam, baby. God, it looks so good. Love it. Now we need to just foam out the floor and then this back wall. And the foaming will be done. All right, so we just got this four piece cut out. I still need to cut out the ribs and then we can attach it. But guys, I just wanna say this is the cheap Amazon foam. And everyone says that this foam does not last very long. So if this foam ever starts to peel off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take five minute epoxy, put it behind on the back and stick it back down again. And I know for a fact that the foam will never peel again after I five minute epoxy it. But that's if it ever peels on me. But everyone says it does peel. But right now it seems pretty strong. Like I can barely even peel it with my fingers. I can't, <laughs> in fact. It's so hard to get off, but uh, yeah, just thought I would tell y'all what I'm using in my boat and if it ever pills, five minute epoxy. Five minute epoxy is like the new duct tape. It's good for everything. But I got this laid down where it needs to sit. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark where I need to cut out the ribs. All right, got all the ribs cut out, and holy crap, it's freaking hot. I'm sweating like a cow. Do cows sweat? That was a weird thing to say. Let's see how she fits. Hey, can you do me a favor? Can you bring me to my house like six feet of tubing, and I'll give you money? Oh my God. Why, why are you so out of breath? I was thinking if my buddy would give me some tubing for this, but uh, he let me down, so I may have to go run into town anyways, get what I need, and come back. Let's do it real quick before they close. Six foot of tubing and some great stuff, and five minute epoxy. That's my shopping list. I'm gonna forget, but that's the list. Let's go. All right, so I got the goods, so we'll be able to continue that tomorrow. It's already getting dark and late, so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish foaming all of this, foam that wall, and then call it a day. Guys, that is how dirty your aluminum is. It may look clean, but it is not. All aluminum comes with this little fine black dust all over it. But guys, I talked about how everyone is saying this foam is just gonna come off because it's cheap Amazon stuff. I talked about using five minute epoxy to fix it if it ever does, but I'm gonna give it about six months or a few months, however long it takes, and then I will do a update video talking about cheap Amazon foam and how long it lasts. Yeah, we'll do a nice little video and an update for everybody so they can know how good or how bad it actually is. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start peeling this off. This is a big piece, so. I'm not going back now. You good, you good, you good? Looks good. Should be good. All right, I can still see a gap for water runoff, so that is perfect. Here we go. No, it ripped. The paper ripped. This ain't good. Go 
but it's so freaking hot in this garage. I think it'd be cooler at night, but it's not. I'm just pushing down all the edges super hard with this piece of angle here. Make sure it's all pressed down good. All right, there she is. There is the four done. Now I need to measure and cut out a piece for this. Guys, these rivets that I put in earlier using the smooth and slow pressure method, I thought they were broken off. It was so flush and I saw these, I could easily see that one. But when you come to these, I was like, did they break off? What the heck is going on? But it's just that perfect that it doesn't look like it's even there. <laughs> That's so sick. I wish they were all like that, but from now on, they will be. Learn my lesson. I'm just standing here, honestly. I've been standing, procrastinating, doing this last piece for some reason. Just how I am. I'll get to it, but right now I'm just going to stand here. <laughs> You know what guys, <laughs> I'm not feeling it. I'm gonna call it a day. I've been out here all day pretty much. We got some of the foam done. We got all this done, looks sick. So uh, I will tackle this and the PVC pipes and the foam tomorrow in the next video. But guys, I hope you all enjoyed this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe as always. And I will catch y'all in the next one. Peace.